basi naomba kwa heshima wananchi wapendo wa jamhuri ama taifa letu la Kenya tuweze kutulia hadi tutakapomaliza ratiba hii kinafuata kipindi kingine pindi ambacho kinaongozwa na brigadia Jeff Mungai Nyaga kwa hivyo naomba wananchi tuweze kutulia tafadhali Kwa heshima naomba sote tuweze kusimama tafadhali. Tutasalia hivyo hivyo tukiwa tumesimama wima kwa wimbo wa taifa na wimbo wa jumuiya Afrika Mashariki punde tu maafisa wetu watakwisha ama wakiweza kumaliza shughuli yao
naomba kwa heshima tafadhali tuweze kutulia tuweze kupewa itifaki ya kuweza kuondoka hapa uwanjani gari la kwanza litakuwa gari ambalo limebeba mwili wa rais wa tatu wa jamhuri ya Kenya mheshimiwa Mwai Kibaki gari la general officers familia iweze kufuata na nitampisha mwenzangu bwana Mike Gitone aweze kuendelea na itifaki ya jinsi tutakavyofumkana kutoka hapa uwanjani nitaomba Waheshimiwa marais wetu na viongozi mbalimbali waliowalikwa tuweze kukiti tafadhali kwa kifupi ili tuweze kuelekezwa katika itifaki ya kuondoka I most humbly wish to request their excellencies to take their seat and also the government representatives as we announce the exit protocol Niombe tena viongozi marais wetu waweze kuketi na wawakilishi wa serikali mbalimbali mbali, ili tuweze kuelekezwa na itifaki ya kuondoka. Ah uh, well it has been a five hour session here at the Nyayo National Stadium to bid farewell uh, the retired president that is the third president Mwai Kibaki this has been a session that has been led both by the church and the military uh, before a multitude of Kenyans who also came here just to uh, bid farewell to the retired president amongst them it was at least nine uh, heads of government and of course uh, presidents uh, from uh, from South Africa uh, from Ethiopia and from the South Sudan. Of course, uh, here we was a team, a whole complete team of the Royal Media Services, Citizen TV, uh, just to trying to uh, ensure that uh, our viewers uh, get the pulse of uh, uh, the send-off of President Moa Kibaki. Uh, from here, of course, uh, uh, all eyes are obeted. The focus will now shift to Odaya, where the, pre the retired president is going to be uh, laid to rest, of course, uh, before the screen is a, is a motorcade of President uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, trying just to make his way uh, out of uh, this venue. Of course, uh, Gashuri, uh, we've been here then t from, say, around uh, early morning to the stadium. Absolutely, Sam. And in any government, there will always be hardliners. Um, there will always be power brokers. And uh, every so often they are blamed for certain decisions that are taken by uh, the president or by the government at, at, at that time. And so in this particular case, during the Grand Coalition government and the peace accord negotiations that were going on, um, you remember sometimes uh, Serena, uh, that room in Serena was, was, was very, very heavy in terms of the content that was coming out of it. And so at at one point, because I remember covering the uh, peace accord talks, uh, at one point it got very, very difficult and you could see the, the talks he's spoken about. People say very good things about him on matters of economy, on matters of infrastructure, on matters of uh, economic part of the 2008 season. And it is one of those uh, situations that the country was almost uh, sliding into, into, into a near totally uh, break, breakdown and a, and, a, and a complete crisis. But thank God a solution was found and here we are. Maybe it's a good lesson that in future uh, elections should not be so contested in such a way that they can end up tearing the very fabric of the nation. And that is the first time we, we had a handshake in the country. <laughs> That, 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 was a, that was a handshake. I think it was the most prominent handshake then. <clears throat> that he played in, in the international uh, arena. Uh, of course, uh, uh, President Salva Kiir mentioning uh, uh, the peace deal that was signed here in Kenya just to make sure that uh, South Sudan uh, stays in, uh, intact. Absolutely. And Kenya, I don't know whether many Kenyans recognize the critical and central role that our country plays uh, insofar as 
uh, regional and international matters are concerned. Every time there's a crisis in Kenya, you see the international community quickly coming in to try and see whether there can be a quick solution to avert any crisis because if Kenya breaks down, so many things are likely to break down. And that's why you see the central role that Kenya plays um, regionally. Uh, the, the, the central role that Kenya played in the peace accord in, in South Sudan remains a very, very important uh, role insofar as that country is concerned. Uh, every so often we've seen even talks to try and find a solution in Somalia. Those, I think it was Ryan Lodinga who said that uh, when the Grand Coalition government was retiring, the country's economy had grown to a tune of 7%. And uh, of course, uh, even in, in uh, uh, Deputy President William Ruto's speech, saying that uh, they're going to learn uh, from what the, the retired president did in terms of growing the economy and of course uh, taking forward this uh, conversation of uh, economic growth of the country. Economy is critical in a country. I mean, it begins and ends with the economy largely because if the, the country's economy is weak, it means it can't develop. It means we cannot be, we cannot be self sustenance But what President Mwai Kibaki did for our country's economy remains one of the key highlights of his legacy because he inherited a depleted economy. He inherited a country that could not sustain itself economically, but within a very short time, he was able to come up with policies together with his team of advisors and other government players to revive our economy. And that's why when he was leaving, the revenue that was being collected had gone up. Many people today will tell you they got a job, they started a business, they owned a property during the tenure of President Mwai Kibaki. Why? Because he was able to do a few things that made it possible for people to, accre to access credit. And that, is the, that was the game changer, so to say. Uh, because at that time, you remember, before President Mwai Kibaki, it was very difficult to access credit facilities in banks. It was very difficult to... You know, even uh, kickstart be dealt with because every so often they would skyrocket to unimaginable levels and made it very possible, impossible for people to access credit. Credit to him that many people were able to do a few things. In fact, let me say quite a number of things uh, uh, during his tenure and that is how our economy developed. And so many people continue to reap the benefits of what it did with our economy. But unfortunately, that economic growth was uh, was halted by the post-election violence uh, 2007 to 2008. So we also had to start another journey of trying to rebuild the same economy that he had to tried to rebuild uh, between 2002 and let's say 2005 or thereabout before we had that referendum. That And one would say, dare say that what we saw that as the 2005 referendum, that contestation is what spilled over to the 2007 general election. And actually it was a precursor to the 2007 general election because even the voting patterns during the referendum, the politics around the referendum in 2005 are the very same politics that we saw in 2007, 2008, and they had an adverse effect on our economy. And of course, uh, try and indulge us, uh, today's general election and actually it was a precursor to the 2007 general election because even the voting patterns during the referendum the politics around the referendum in 2005 are the very same politics that we saw in 2007 2008 and they had an adverse effect on our economy and of course uh, try and indulge us uh, to Election. Because even the voting patterns during the referendum, the politics around the referendum in 2005 are the very same politics that we saw in 2007, 2008, and they had an adverse effect on our economy. And of course, uh, try and indul indulge us, uh, today's, today's function was very fundamentally different uh, from uh, what we saw in, uh, in, in 2020, in 2020. Uh, when uh, President Moi was here, Richard President, the late Richard President Moi was here. Uh, just uh, indulge us on... Uh, the difference between the, those two functions because today we actually had a full church service. Why was that? Well, first of all, Mweshimua Asawi Hewa Gazewde, Raisu wa Shirikisho wa Kidemokrasia Jamuri ya Ethiopia unapondoka. Ataondoka ni Mweshimua Waziri Mku, Mweshimua Dr. Edward, Waziri Mku wa Jamuri ya Rwanda. Very well, Sam. And uh, you, you raise a very critical issue. Actually, we've had four presidents in this country. President Jomo Kenyatta, the late. President uh, Daniel Arap Moi, the late. President Emilio Moi Kibaki, the late. And now President Uhuru Kenyatta. 
in a span of two years, we have lost two former presidents. That is uh, President Moi and President Kibaki. Actually, President Uhuru Kenyatta has, is now burying the second uh, former president uh, during his uh, tenure, especially the second term and in a span of two years. So, as it stands now, we do not have a, we do not, we do not have a former president uh, in this country. Uh, we will have a former president from August or thereabout once the election is concluded. And so, it's a loss for our country that um, that repository of knowledge of history has gone. But um, all, those are three leaders that will be remembered for various things that they have done for our country. Fundamentally different from what we saw in, the, in, in, in 2020, two years ago. Um, that service was interdenominational. But today we've seen a full Catholic mass because President Moai Kibaki, the late, was a Catholic. And so according to his wishes and the wishes of his family, he has been accorded uh, the Holy Mass. For us Catholic uh, faithful, the Holy Mass is the greatest uh, sign of respect. It is, a, it, is the, it is the greatest level of, uh, of, of honor one can be granted. And especially for um, an event that, like we saw today, attended by nine bishops, you know, three archbishops, uh, two, three archbishops actually, and six, uh, four archbishops actually, and um, Five, uh, five bishops. Uh, Archbishop uh, Philip Agnolo of, of Archdiocese of Nairobi was the presiding uh, minister, uh, assisted by Archbishop Martin Kivuva of Mombasa. Uh, then, of course, the Pope's Nuncio, representative in Kenya, uh, and of course, uh, Archbishop Anthony Muheria. Archbishop Anthony Muheria is the president's rural Archbishop in Nyeri. So, tomorrow, you're most likely to see uh, Archbishop Anthony Muheria taking charge uh, because uh, it is in his jurisdiction of Nyeri Archdiocese, where we will be tomorrow. And so that is, the, I would say, the slight departure. Also, you, you note that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta first arrived before the body arrived, and so he was there to receive the body of um, Mzemoa Kibaki. And uh, quite a number of, uh, I would say, changes. There are, of course, also lessons that were learned uh, from the uh, 2020 event, and a bit of um, uh, polishing, if you compare to the, the 2020, 2020 event to today. So I would say, it's mu it, it has been done in a much better way than it was in 2020. But remember, the last time we, ha we buried um, or we mourned a president was in 1978. So you can imagine the difference between 1978 and 2020. Quite a number of things may have happened. And so it was one of those uh, quite unexpected scenarios. And so probably we have now learned better and the events are now being conducted in a much better way. But suffice to say, the Kenya military, A1, always spectacular, you know, orderly, magnificent. Uh, I, I thought that was the highlight of the whole event. And of course the choir. I, I enjoyed the, the choral music and the order and the organization. So much better event. Well, uh, thank you so much. I think uh, as we wrap up, I think uh, tomorrow is when we'll see the president being granted the 19 gun salute. That is the second honor in terms of uh, uh, an honor that you can grant uh, a dignitary because uh, the reason for the 19